Yes, folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It is time for the starting 11 prediction for the New Year derby at Ibrox tomorrow. Celtic going at nine points clear on a 12 match winning run in the league. But who will Ange Postacoglu pick to start tomorrow? Yes, welcome back. Here we go. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to say Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a brilliant time last night. 2022 was a fantastic year for Celtic, a brilliant year for the channel. Thank you to everyone who's liked, subscribed, watched, commented over the last 12 months. Um, it means a lot to us. It's why we bring you this content. We did surpass 37,000 subscribers the other day there. So we're chasing down 40 now and the quicker we can get to that huge milestone, the better. But once again, thank you for all your support. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic over the last 12 months. Now we come into this game, of course, nine points clear on that 12 match uh, win and run. Rangers are sitting second, nine points behind us. They have a four match win and run of their own, but they haven't managed five consecutive wins all season in the league. They're obviously under new management with Michael Beal. Still looks like the consensus is they're, they're trying to get used to uh, the way he's, he's getting them to play. A slight change in shape and formation, back to more similar to what they were like under Steven Gerrard. Um, and as I say, they've managed to get four wins, but I think the consensus is they've not played particularly well in those games. This is obviously a huge opportunity for us if we were to win the game to move 12 points clear and put ourselves in what would almost be an insurmountable uh, position in terms of winning the league title. But there's no doubt that they'll be up for it. They always are at home. And if we can weather that storm in the same way we did uh, at Easter Road during the week and the last time we went to Ibrox where we went 1-0 down after two minutes but responded brilliantly, uh, played our football and, and managed to turn it around and, and win 2-1. If we can do that, um, I expect us to get a really good result on Monday. Now ahead of the game, I spoke to Ange Postacoglu and Greg Taylor at the press conference yesterday. I asked Ange Postacoglu if previous experience in these games was a factor in helping him pick the, the team and if the team could take confidence, and if he takes confidence from the way they responded uh, to going behind Ibrox last time in April uh, and winning the game, here's what he had to say. Again, you know, I think it's if you fall into that trap, I think you, you kind of you miss what's in front of you. You know, my my decisions around make you know picking a team are what what's happening you know currently. It's it's even the last game just becomes a reference point because things change. I mean, the other day. You know, we had Jota fall ill the day before the game, couldn't train, so even though he was in my plan. So if I sit here and, you know, try and um, think about today what the team's going to be for, for Monday, then, um, you know, I'm likely to, to miss some key information coming in. I always make these decisions, um, you know, having all the information I can to do that, and it means that you take in training, you take in how the players are, are feeling, how, they, how they're looking at training, you take into account the opponent, you know, the circumstances. It's everything. It's about... You know, like I said, I, my, you know, when people sort of um, try and guess my team selections or, you know, pass judgment on it, they're usually doing it with probably around 40% of the information I have. And I'm sure if they had 100% of the information, they may still think I got it wrong. But, um, you know, at the same time, I think they'll understand why I've made my decisions. Yeah. How much confidence do you take from the last trip to Ibrooks where the team stuck to their principles despite going behind so early on in that environment? Yeah, look, again, to a certain extent, but we've changed so much since then and, and they've changed, obviously, but <coughs> I take confidence from what we're doing now. You know, that's what gives me confidence that and belief is that, you know, whatever challenges we've had so far this year, you know, apart from the St Mirren game, we've we've overcome domestically and um, that's where, you, you know, not just me, I guess the players, everyone gets their belief from. Um, <coughs> What happened last year is um, is in our trophy cabinet. That's it, and that's where it's locked away. It's not relevant now. It's not relevant. I mean, I don't, I, re I won't, you know, I, I don't use last year as a reference point for anything. Um, when we talk to the team this year, um, you know, we talk about our growth this year. You know, how, how we started the season and how we want to finish it, and that's that's always going to be, you know, where how we compare ourselves, how we're going, and and you know how we evaluate ourselves because. You know, if I start talking about last year, um, then you know people can rightly talk about the year before or the year before that, and it, 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 you end up down a tunnel that, you know, really to me has no relevance to this current group of players, this 
current environment. Um, like I said, we're, we're a different team to the first game of the year, let alone last year. So, yeah, those kind of things uh, are less important than, than what's happening right now. There you go. Great to talk to the manager yesterday, I think. The, the most interesting uh, insight there was how how much he wanted to get the message across that last year means nothing. Now, it was the last time this group of players went to Highbrooks. We have added players to the team since then, but he was very keen to get the message across that last year is last year and it means nothing now. And it was encouraging to hear him say that they never used last year um, when talking to the players this season. It's about what they want to achieve this season, how they do that. It's about what's happening currently right now. And I think that gives you a view into the approach that Ange takes with the players in terms of motivating them, in terms of keeping them going, um, never letting them get complacent by looking back at, at previous victories. As he says, that everything that happened last year um, is in the trophy cabinet and now this is a new season. And I think that's a really interesting uh, insight into the, the mindset that he'll be imprinting on the team coming into this game. Uh, Greg Taylor is fit. I asked him about the competition and training and he says it's always of a high standard um, and that they can, as a group, take confidence for that victory at Ibrox last season coming into this game. So let's get to the starting 11. That is the reason that we're here. We'll start in goals with Joe Hart. Now, there's so many questions throughout this lineup, and people have been debating them for a few days now following that 4-0 victory at Easter Road. I think Josip Juranovic is going to come back in and play right back. Hatati's done okay. He did really well against St. Johnston. Got himself two goals. I think going forward, he, he was still pretty decent the other night. But he did uh, have a test up against Yuan on the, the left wing for Hibs. And I think we're asking for trouble um, to shoehorn someone who's not a fullback into that position tomorrow. Juranovic is back. He's fit. He's available. He's had a good couple of weeks rest now following the World Cup where he was absolutely outstanding. So his conditioning should still be excellent. Um, and we know that he's played well in these games before. So I think it's massive um, in terms of our approach to this game that Juranovic starts. And I think it obviously has knock-on effects as we go through the team. But I think it's vitally important that Juranovic starts in that right-back position. Centre-half pairing of Carter Vickers and Star felt excellent again the other night. As I say, we had to defend at times. And OK, we rode our luck here and there. Hibs did clip the post just before half-time uh, and they came out of the blocks pretty quickly, but I thought those two were, were really, really good and defended excellently again, as they tend to do when they play together. At left-back, as I say, Greg Taylor, speaking to him yesterday, he seems absolutely ready to go. He said the, the coming off on, on Wednesday was only precautionary, so he should be fit um, and he's been brilliant this season. He was excellent the other night as well with that slideville pass for Maeda and the build-up to the penalty for the third goal. So he's in great form. In midfield, Callum McGregor will captain the team and play in a deeper position. And Aaron Moy's form, which has been excellent in the last two games, has cast doubt on who the other midfield two will be. If Juranovic comes back in, one of O'Reilly, Hatate and Moy can't play. And I have to be honest, I think it will be Aaron Moy that sits out. I think he's done brilliantly in the last two games. But I still don't think that's enough. I don't think a good performance against St. Johnston and then against Hibs is enough to get you into that Celtic midfield in this game. I think those three, McGregor, Hatati, O'Reilly, have got experience of winning these fixtures. The three of them have been absolutely excellent. Um, and I expect them to start the game. I think the concern with Moy would be the pace of the game. Sometimes at Ibrox in the opening period, if Rangers come out of the blocks, it can get a bit frantic and you want legs in there, you want energy. And I think those three give us that. They, as I say, they've been there before. They were there at Ibrox in April and they responded brilliantly after losing a goal uh, two minutes in to go on and win the game. McGregor took the game by the scruff of the neck that day, hauled his level, uh, and I think those three are absolutely massive for us. We know the midfield is huge in these games. And right now, across the two squads, I wouldn't take any other three players than those three. I think they're absolutely massive for us. And then we come to the front three, where again, there's there's huge debate about who can start. Um, Jota, Abada, Maeda, those three um, have all either been playing excellently recently or have great records against Rangers. Um, Maeda, brilliant the other night, scored a great goal. It's probably the best goal he's ever scored for Celtic. We know what Maeda's qualities are. Sometimes he looks a bit rusty technically, um, but not the other night. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Um, 
I think on the right hand side, Jota is going to come back in. We talked about this uh, at length in the preview show yesterday, whether it's going to be a Bada or Jota. I think a Bada has an excellent record in this fixture, particularly at Celtic Park. Um, he, he scored a number of goals against Rangers and he's always came up big in these fixtures. But I think Jota, having sat out the last two games, um, the impact he's had against Rangers as well as man of the match the last time in that 4 0 game in September. I think he's just going to pip Abada, and Abada is a brilliant weapon off the bench for us at some point in the game. Um, if he can get into space against Barisic, get running at him, he can cause Rangers problems in the second half. But I think up against Jota, um, he can give the Rangers defence nightmares as well. It's a really nice problem for the manager to have, um, to have three or four wingers who he knows can contribute in these games. Um, who are really dangerous players uh, in terms of output going forward. I think that's huge for the manager. Uh, I think Jota's going to get the nod on the right-hand side and I think Dyson Maida will play on the left. I just think what Maida gives you in these games is absolutely massive, particularly away from home. Going back to that game in April at Ibrox, he was absolutely superb. He ran himself into the ground. The defensive work that he did and we had to defend in the second half, um, we almost let Rangers have the ball and we defended uh, for, for large spells in that second half at Ibrox in April. But Maeda was absolutely brilliant. And I think, given how Rangers like to play through the fullbacks, which is more more pertinent now that, that Beal has, has taken over than it was under Van Bronckhorst, I think the work Maeda puts in is going to be really, really important for us. So I think he'll get the nod. That means Abada, as I say, sits out. Um, no doubt some of you will think that Abada should start on the right-hand side, Jota should start on the left. I just can't see past Dyson Maeda starting in this football match. Through the middle, it is obviously going to be Kyogo Furuhashi, or I say obviously, if you don't think it's obvious, let me know in the comments below. I just think where Yakimakis is at just now, um, he's not in a place to start this game, despite his good performances against Rangers in the past. He does look a little bit frustrated, um, a frustrated figure when he comes off the bench. I think there is obviously something going on off the pitch because it's not like him. His attitude and his body language is usually impeccable when he's on the pitch. Um, but he's looked really, really frustrated in the last few sub-appearances that he's had. And yes, Kyogo needs a goal against Rangers. There's no getting away from that. It's the one big question mark, I suppose. But if you think back to his debut, he was out on the left-hand side in a team that was just thrown together. Then he missed an array of games through injury. Um, and he started that game in September and was subbed off after a minute or two. So... He's never really had a chance to play through the middle against Rangers fully fit and in form. This is that chance for him. He's got to write tackles. He's got to make sure that if somebody wants to come and try and hurt him, like Lundstrom in the first minute, that he doesn't let it get to him. Um, and he's got to take a chance when it comes along. You've got full faith in him, 14 goals in 17 games. We know he can finish. He's averaging a goal every 77 minutes in the league this season. And I want to see a big performance from him at Ibrox tomorrow. So there you go. That is the team I think Ange Postacoglu might go with for the big game tomorrow. Like this video. Let me know who you think will start in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And please join us tomorrow for the post-match pint from Malone's after the game. Cheers.